Hello, thank you for joining me. You can see where I am. I'm at Crawley today. We've come here for an episode of Miniature Railway Britain. We're going to go and visit the Crawley and District Model Engineers Society's Railway up at Goffs Park, which is just up the line from here. But first, I thought we'd start with the station. Now, this is the second station to serve the town. This station opened in July 1968, but the line through here on Crawley first got its station back in 1848, and that station was just there. The platforms are still there and the gates are just going down so there's obviously a train coming in one direction or the other. Now the high, I believe, I think that's the high street over there. So the idea was they built the station there to serve the older part of the town but as the town grew up and became a new town after the war it was decided to move the station. That station was a bit too small and now we've got this, okay it's only got two platforms, two quite long platforms. It comfortably sits a 12 car train. I just arrived on one so this is the 1960s replacement. Now when the railway that we are going to go to opened, if you'd come to it then, you'd have arrived on that station because the railway opened, the Minutes Railway opened in 1962. Now I've seen this railway a few times. I've been past it on the train but I've never actually had a ride. So I'm excited to have a ride and um, go past this line on the train from the Miniature Railway. Interestingly, there's a nice old lattice footbridge here, quite a big one but that's outside the ticket barriers of the station. I might even go for a walk over it, just uh, to, because I can kind of thing. So, and if you look at it, you can see the width. It must have been built to span a good yard. So I can only assume there was a good yard here. This uh, derelict building here is called Overline House. When they opened this new station, they decided it would be a good idea to have some office accommodation, which they could rent out. And I suppose the name Overline House is fairly obvious. It's, it's not quite over the line, but certainly looks over the line but it's derelict now there was talk of it becoming apartments i'm not sure if they mean knocking it down and building apartments or just uh, simply converting it to apartments so if you were to get an apartment there you'd have quite a good we'd well, certainly have very good access you could pretty much if i lived there and i had access i'd be tempted to have a rope ladder going out the window and i could just get straight on the train this is the funny little back entrance to the station with um one set of ticket barriers so that takes us out over there there's a modern bridge so that's not the original bridge um, and with this station there would have been a concrete bridge but to make the station accessibility for all they put a bridge with lifts in although it actually was already step free because of this entrance but I suppose it's a bit inconvenient here comes a southern class 377 So another 12 car train, so as you can see this station comfortably handles a 12 car train because they were making announcements on the train down saying if you're going to this station you, and that station you need to travel in these carriages but I didn't need to worry while well, I was right at the front where it was quietest. So there's a couple of level crossings up there, what we'll do, we'll make our way out the station, we'll go down to the next level crossing where we can have a look at the other end of the original Crawley railway station. There we are, up on the modern footbridge, looking at Overline House. Funny what I said about having, if you live there, you can always have direct access onto the platform. I've noticed on this side, there's a big hotel there. And in the platform just there, there's a direct access from the platform to the hotel. So uh, that's interesting. So in order to use that entrance, I assume you have to be staying at the hotel. Anyway, I'm going to make my way down and out the station. And as I said, we're going to go and have a look at bit more closely at the site of the old station. So we're now outside the front of the station and there's some hoarding showing what's going to happen with the development. So we've got Overline House above us. I think from looking at this it looks like they are keeping Overline House but refurbishing it and then all along where the original station was they're going to build lots of flats. So it's all going to look quite different in a few years' time. But as I said, they will have very easy access to the railway station. From looking at that there, it looks like there's going to be a kind of a canopy coming out here. And then there's going to be a shop just there. So let's go and have a look at the old station. Then we're going to go and look at the little station. 
and this not particularly exciting area here, I think, would have been the forecourt of the original station. You can just see Overline House in the background now. It gets more interesting up here because we have got something from the earlier railway days here which survives, which we're going to have a look at. It's just in front of us. There is an old signal box saying Crawley. So this would have been the main signal box for the station. Like I say, I think this is the high street. This is the older part of Crawley. And then you can see how the box would have controlled the busy level crossing. There's a pub there called The Railway. So, so that way is looking towards Horsham, looking towards London. We get a very good view. We're literally at the end of the original platforms. And then I suppose that was the railway hotel. And then that's the signal box. Now the signal box, you can go and visit. They do have open days. In fact, even they're advertising one up there. It says they're having an open day. The only problem is they tend to, well, I think they're all on a Saturday. And the miniature railway runs on a Sunday. So you can't actually come and do both in one day, which I think is rather a shame. So it'd be quite nice if, you know, they could also have some open days on a Sunday. Because if it was open, definitely make this part of the video. Look, let's have a look. Um, so it says it's a grade two listed signal box, Crawley Signal Box Preservation Society. So it looks like you go in there, it says display. Oh, I see, yes, I think you can go up to the box and you can also go have a look in the lab room underneath. So let's, let's just go and have one more look at the front of Crawley Signal Box. So it's, I'd like to go and do that, but I'd have to come here one Saturday. So perhaps if I'm down here one Saturday, I could go and do a video on that. It just, uh, it's just a shame. The two would have complemented each other nicely to have done one video of both the miniature railway and the signal box, but it hasn't worked like that. So there we are, that's the signal box. I'm going to now go and find the miniature railway. So I've just walked along this road there, which parallels the railway, and we have now arrived at Goffs Park, where this miniature railway is situated. So as I said, this is the railway line between Free Bridges and Horsham, and I said I've seen the miniature railway from the standard gauge railway. So now is our time to see the standard gauge railway from the miniature railway. So as we arrive into the park, there's a nice lot of daffodils out, which all look very nice. And we can see a circle coming around there, the miniature railway. So I'm excited to have a ride. Not been here before, but as I said, I have seen it. So I wonder what they're going to be running. There's a train. I can just see some people getting on the train. So what I'll do... We'll hang around here, we'll see the train arrive, and then we'll go for a ride ourselves on the Goffs Park Light Rail.
So a 67005 Queen's Messenger goes off on the next journey. It's nice to get some 67 haulage, even if it was in miniature. You can see some of the other locos on shed. There's a, a warship part there. There's a class 20 and a class 66. So what we're gonna do now, I'm just gonna walk along beside the railway and tell you a few things about the railway. So, as I mentioned, the club has been around since 1962, but the railway first opened in 1963. So it's gonna be 60 years old this year. Now, when it started, it wasn't quite as long as it is now. We, we saw that from the ride, it's straight. So there's the station, runs straight or straight with a slight kink just past the oak tree and then there's a loop around comes back here there's another loop so when it first opened it was just this one piece of track straight with a kink up and down and the trains just went backwards and forwards so that's what it was like in 1962 and then it was a few years later it was extended to form the route it forms now i can hear the level crossing gates on the standard gauge line going down so we might be about to get uh, big and little trains together the little train is just coming along now I wonder when the big train I'm assuming it's coming from that way could be going the other way or we're going to get the two together let's watch the little one go past anyway Okay, so the standard ghost train hasn't arrived, but at least the little one has passed, and the little one isn't holding up the traffic at the level crossings. So let's just, we'll just walk along here and see what happens. Well, I want to see the standard gauge train go by. If it's that long, take, I might even see the little train come along again. It's, um, I do, something interesting about raised track, they're a lot more visible from a distance. So say if you are passing on the train, it's perhaps more noticeable the one thing they obviously don't do is they don't have points but i have been to you know the more i go to them the more interesting i find of racetrack railways I, and i like how they like i say they, they they're like a fence they cut through the landscape and also you kind of can see you get to see the loco more at eyes length in fact it's funny because when i sit here i can see a loco go past the eye level and then if i turn to the standard gauge line well, we're not going to see a loco, but we'll see a train. Don't get many loco haul trains on this line. They all seem to be, well, I came on a class 377. I've seen the old Thameslink train go past. And, uh, yeah, right now, the gates are down, but we haven't actually... Ah, oh, what's this? Can I hear a train? It's keeping me in suspense, this. It's a very nice place to wait, you know, in amongst the daffodils. I can see the Goffs Park Mansion just up the top of the hill. We'll go up there. Once we've had a ride on the train, we'll, we'll go up and have a look at that. But I just want to see a train on both lines. And it's frustrating knowing that the barriers are down and there's no train. I can see the little Class 67 down there waiting to come forward with its next lot of passengers. So, let's see what happens. I think we're finally going to get... There we go, it's a Thames Link train. As if on cue. So that was my little ambition was to to stand here and have big and small trains pass me on each side. So I'm quite pleased now I've uh, achieved that ambition. I'm going to do a bit, little bit more line siding and I might go for another ride before I go and then I'm going to We'll walk up to the top of the hill and we'll have a look at the mansion up there.
Well, I've had a great time here at the Goffs Park Miniature Railway and a couple of trips behind their Class 67. So that 67005 is one of the locos which would haul the Royal Train. So, and there's also 67006. I have seen them out on the network occasionally. I've never actually seen them on the Royal Train. So it's quite nice to travel behind that loco in miniature. What I'm going to do now though, seeing as we're here, I thought we'll walk up to see the mansion in the house, in the, the house which this was all their garden once, and now they've got the miniature railway in the garden. Well, they've had the miniature railway for 60 years, as we found out. So you can see the site of the miniature railway. It's quite interesting. They've got a signal just as you start, and then I was talking to them. So they they set the signal off, and then the train can go around. Sometimes they run more than one train because you know there's quite the capacity to do it, but they do it on line of sight. So once one train's out, they know when the next one can go and they regulate it with the signal which they have so yeah as I say we've got 
three sets of railways, or four, well, four tracks technically, two miniature tracks and then two standard gauge tracks. There's a sign there, look, just saying Goffs Park Railway running today. It's five inch gauge, there is some three and a half inch gauge, but it doesn't currently run the whole length, so they're not running for any three and a half inch at the moment. They run most Sundays, well I think every Sunday throughout the main part of the season, certainly from Easter to October, but this year they've started their season a little bit earlier, which is quite nice. It's not yet Easter, so we can come on a day like today. It's a very nice park though to visit, so you know, if you're out Crawley Way, do come and visit the park. It's a flat walk from the station. Even the next station on the railway, the standard guest line, Ifield, isn't far that way. I might even go there and tick it off but that station is only served by the Thameslink trains the southern trains don't stop there I'm just heading up the hill now and we're going to go up to the top have a look at the mansion well here we are at the top of the hill little train is just down there just making its way back to the station just about see it there going along and we're going to go and have a look at the mansion. So the mansion was built in 1882 for a banker called Edwin Hetney and he had he owned all of this land. So this is where he built his mansion situated nicely at the top of the hill. When the mansion was built the railway would have already been there because I said it opened in 1848 so it wasn't like quite often you have it with main lines that they go through, you know, people's land and the landowners weren't very happy. So you get things like stations built or tunnels to hide the railway. None of that, he would have looked out at the railway, not the miniature railway, just the standard gauge railway from his, his house here. So this is, it was originally actually called Goff's Hill House. Maybe if this is Goff's Park, this is Goff's Hill, which we've just come up to the top of. Very interesting house to look at. You, I don't think you can go in it anymore. Oh, there's a, there's a lake just over there. Have a look at it a second. It used to be the town's museum, but I've been told the museum has now moved to the town centre. And from talking to some of the volunteers at the railway, they said it is well worth a visit. So we won't go there today. It's not open on Sunday. But maybe another time. Maybe I should come back on a Saturday. And we can go to the signal box. So there you go. That's the back of the house. So it certainly had some very nice views. I think beyond here it's all housing estates. Yeah, nice rare flowers coming out. And then, oh, I think, there's a lake here. So it's, it's a really pleasant park if you like, you know, especially to come here in the spring, see the daffodils out and see, you know, just have a pleasant walk around the gardens, have a look at the lake, which I'm about to show you. Seems like a really nice place to come for a walk and if you come on a Sunday a ride on the miniature train. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. Do come and visit Goffs Park and the Goffs Park Miniature Railway. Please do feel free to like, subscribe and comment and from the lake at Goffs Park. Goodbye.